Welcome to another edition of Tech Talks To Go. I'm your host, Sean Donahue. Join us today as we continue our conversation with special guest Ron Oglesby on the Citrix app layering packaging process. Hey, you don't have a packager queued up and ready to go, do you? Of course I do. Ah, it's almost like we practiced this. Amazing, <laughs> amazing production value. That's right. So, right, what, are we looking so at? what I did, uh, this is our, our layering interface, and I've got demo app is the one I've got running right now. But what I did to get to that point was I selected create an app layer, and you walk through the wizard, give it a name, give it a version number. Uh, I picked the OS that I'm going to build it on, Windows 10 or Windows Server in my case. Mm -hmm. This is those prerequisite layers. If I'm just starting raw, maybe I don't have any prereqs, but if I'm... Uh, create, I'm creating a layer for the Salesforce Outlook plugin. I know, hey, I, I need Office. So I can select, this is that prerequisite that I was talking about. I can oh. select Office as a prerequisite. All right, so, so I just start from the golden image. I don't actually have to apply Office to the golden image. No, I just you don't, yeah. slide exactly. it in through a layer, through a package. It, exactly. If I've already packaged Office, I don't have to repackage it as part of this oh. uh, deployment. Uh, and I don't have to say, oh, let me log into my gold image, let me put Office on it, now I can do some packaging. I can just pick Office or Project or Open Office or whatever the dependency is. Mm -hmm. I only use these when there's an actual dependency, but, yeah, I don't have to repackage it. I select it. Yeah, awesome. So I've, You select the target you're going to build it on, so much right? time vSphere, saved. Azure, yeah. Zen Server. It tells you the name of the packaging disk. Hey, I, it names it after the app. Mm -hmm. uh, you can give it a pretty icon or an ugly, leave the ugly green icon there. Okay. And say create a layer. And what it actually does is go out, and in this case it would grab Windows 10, it would grab Office, uh, I would put those into the packaging disk, it would copy it out to my Zen server environment and boot the machine up. Uh, and in my case, I, I already did this once for my demo, uh, I boots the machine up, this is my installation machine on Hyper-V. Mm -hmm. I log in, and at this point, I do whatever I was going to do. Uh, if it's, yeah, if it's, hey, I got to go out to Internet Explorer, I have to download uh, a certain application. Of course, I don't have my Internet uh, Explorer security set. Yeah. Uh, or I go out to a file share, whatever. I just run my install. I do my reboots, whatever. And when I'm all done, this little icon on the desktop, mm -hmm. right-click, run as admin. And look at what it did, because I've been messing with this VM. Yep. A post-installation reboot is pending. Okay. Please check reboot the packaging machine. Oh, okay, it tells me, yep. hey, it's got outstanding files or, or uh, it's got tasks going on. No big deal. Go ahead and do your restarts. Do whatever restarts it requires. Do all that. It'll actually do the reboot, and you come back in and rerun that. And, it's, and that's it. Is it that is making the whole the time, or is, it, is the packager pausing and then coming back when it reboots? Oh, it's no, it's monitoring the entire time. So what, remember, what's happening here is uh, the same virtual file system and virtual registry that's used when you run layers yep. is actually running in the background at boot right here when this machine boots up. All that, all that shutdown icon does, that shutdown link when I run it, is run a series of integrity checks for layering to make sure that that layer, hey, there's no outstanding file copies, there's no... Uh, outstanding engine operations from .NET applications to make sure that the, the finalized layer is pure, it's clean, it's got all the files it was supposed to have, there's no tricky Windows stuff going on in the background and something didn't cop get copied, that's all it does. So when that machine uh, reboots, like you know yeah. this one did, a nice quick reboot, you log back in and you now are ready to go in and go, okay, now I can shut down that machine. Okay, and now it does the proper and clean it. shutdown. And now it now yeah, at first it does the analysis, make sure that there's no outstanding file copies or any unfinished business which it didn't find. Mm -hmm. Shuts it down. I can actually come back into my interface now and finalize right on the right side. I can hit finalize and that's it. This will become a layer. Now notice this and we had talked about this a little bit, uh, the script path. Uh, you had actually asked me about this uh, yeah, before. Yeah, the scripting. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, is, this is 
I want to be able to execute a script when this is assigned to a user or a machine for the first time. What kind of things now, would you put through a script? Are we talking drive mappings or? Yeah, I don't know that you, you could probably do a drive mapping, but this is a run once type of, oh. of script. And drive mapping is also often a you know run every time. This is typically used uh, more often when the app needs some initial configuration, either specific to the machine you're logging into or maybe specific to uh, the first use of the application. So I assign you an app, mm -hmm. and in your profile, they need an INI file, right? It's some old app or an XML file or a set of registry keys imported or mm -hmm. uh, whatever. I could actually ex I could put a script path here to a you know command file that goes out and copies whatever it needs or imports registry entries to set up that app right. Or maybe it's like a version of QuickBooks uh, that relicenses on the disk signature of the target machine, mm -hmm. right? QuickBooks has a script for that. I could actually put that script in the layer. And the first time this is assigned to a machine and a user logs in, that script will execute, pull out of the run once, and bam, it relicenses and resets up the app. Yeah. Now, okay, Ron, we got to do a rapid fire uh, as we do in every episode. So are you ready for rapid fire while we wrap this yeah. demo up? All right. Rapid let's fire, number one, if I'm used to like uh, other packaging solutions, let's say it's an admin studio or a thin app or uh, an app V packager or sequencer, uh, am I going to be familiar? Uh, if, am I going to be easy to adapt to the app layering packager? Yeah, it'll it'll be easier. I think that uh, what they'll find is is generally people that are used to packaging are used to having some type of software in their packaging machine, mm -hmm. right? That they launch, they run their install, and when they're done with their install, they go back to that app and they do some changes, and you know. Uh, mess with the package in AppV, mess with the isolation modes right. and stuff. Here, there's not all that control. You're just making a layer. Yep. You're capturing the disk. Um, what I find is it's not the experience of application packaging uh, that that gives a, a uh, makes someone better at layering or, or faster at layering. Mm -hmm. uh, or with a specific tool, it's that they understand application packaging, right? That they understand the fundamentals of application installs and uh, things that are machine-based versus user-based. If you've got that type of experience, layering is going to come real easy. Gotcha. Uh, what if I'm packaging an application that makes a call out to the internet for something? Maybe it's a license check mm -hmm. or it's some sort of a, an internet call. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fine. As long as the, you know, the packaging machine is a virtual machine, it has a network card. As long as it's got an IP address and has internet access, all that stuff still works. Okay. And I'm going to throw it old school here because I always get hit with these. What if it's an application that does a call for a dongle that's connected to the desktop? A dongle. A dongle. Oh, those are always fun. Um, whether licensing dongles or devices, right? Mm -hmm. you, you even have those devices. Uh, one of the tricks that we I found that my customers have been very successful at, especially like healthcare, right? There's always scanners and webcams and all these other things on, on their devices. One of the things I found that, that's very interesting is a trick that they do is that installation machine, when it boots, mm -hmm. a lot of them will go ahead and assign like their VDA to it, yeah. right? They'll let it boot, and they'll actually add it in uh, to a delivery group, a little test delivery group. Then they'll use a thin client or a client like their customers are using and connect to the installation machine via that client mm -hmm. with the third-party webcam or dongle or whatever actually hooked into the slot where they want it to be recognized. Okay. At that point, it's all about the protocol. Does the protocol handle the USB redirection or whatever the device is plugged into? And it'll work as expected. Yeah. Um, you know, does that mean that, you know, all apps that this app looks for a, a dongle attached to, you know, serial one or something and there is no serial one or, mm -hmm. yeah, that stuff is always going to be tricky, but a lot of webcam and uh, other peripheral devices yep. need to see the protocol, need to see the redirection, okay. and you can actually do what I just said, connect to it via the right protocol, have it yep. plugged in, mm -hmm. and do those types of installations. Okay, awesome. And hey, Ron, uh, once the package is done, what's the next step that we're going to look at? Uh, from there, it's assignment, right? Now, uh, one of the things I like to point out is when a, when a package is complete, like if I select the AppSense, let's say I just finished my AppSense agents, mm -hmm. and I want to assign it, is am I assigning this application elastically, hot add, to yeah. the user, or am I assigning it to the images, to the layers? Okay. Now if I look at this, 
AppSense and I go to Elastic Assignment, you can actually see it's got a little red box here. It says this layer probably will not work if deployed elastically, and it tells them why. Okay. Right? The layer contains a driver or a service start value that might be a problem. Yep. Uh, this is part of the analysis of the layer. When the layer is finalized, we look into it to see if it's going to have uh, features or little boot time stuff that is going to keep pieces of the app from working as a, a, a working elastically. Mm -hmm. But if I look at like Firefox at assignments and I go to elastic assignment, it's all green. Yeah. Right? It allows me to see the active directory groups. So at this point it's about deploying the app, right? What are my options? Uh, Firefox I can deploy elastically or I can push it into an image template. You have both options. But something like an AppSense agents or antivirus these are going to be pushed into the image, into the layered image. Okay. Hey, Ron, is it possible that I can persuade you to come back on another episode of Tech Talks to Go and cover assignments in more depth? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I actually think we can do that. We can jump in. Awesome. All right. Back is up against the wall, as always. Uh, on behalf of Tech Talks to Go, I'm Sean Donahue, and I want to thank my special guest, Ron Oglesby, for joining me again today. Thanks, Ron. And Thanks everybody, a lot, have a great day. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on today's Tech Talks To Go. And thanks to my special guest, Ron Oglesby from the Unidesk Layering or Citrix App Layering Technologies. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Get the first updates on new episodes of Tech Talks To Go. Always read the blogs. There is a great masterclass available on YouTube covering this subject in depth. And of course, follow us on Twitter at hashtag Citrix Tech and look for those emails about future episodes on Tech Talks To Go. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Cheers.